Welcome to my lecture online. Here we're going to look at two chords that are equidistant from the center and what kind of information can we glean from that. So first let's go to the left side of the board here and take a look. Notice that we have two chords, one going from A to B, the other one going from A to D. Notice that they're equidistant away from the center. Uh, in order to find that line that's that goes from the chord to the center, we want to find a line that that hits the chord perpendicular to the chord. That is a requirement. And so this distance here would then be equal to this distance there. And that's indicated right here. If CF is congruent to GC, then we can conclude that the length from A to B must equal to the length from A to D. In other words, the two chords must therefore be congruent. It doesn't matter if it's depicted like this or if it's depicted like this, where they cross one another. Again, here we have these two lines, and since we say that FC is congruent to uh, CG, then we conclude that ED has to be congru uh, congruent to AB. And so that is what we can get from that information. Now let's show you numerically where that's coming from. So let's say we have a circle whose radius is 26, and notice that the distance from the, from the um, chord to the center is equal to 10, and that is true for both chords. Well, what we can do here is we can draw, let me use a different color, maybe that's a little easier to see, let me draw the radius from A to the center, right there. So there's the radius, and let's mark it as R for the radius, and then we can see that we have a right triangle. Of course, with a right triangle, we know that the distance from C to D squared plus the distance from d to a squared must equal the radius squared. So we can say there that the radius squared, whoop, can't get the pen off my cap, there we go. So we can say that the radius squared must equal the distance from c to d squared plus the distance from a to d squared as well. There we go. Plug in the numbers that we know, so this would be 26 squared is equal to from c to d, that is 10 squared plus a to d squared. All right, so then we say, then we can say that a to d is therefore equal to, and let me put a little line on it because it's the length from there to there, is equal to the square root of 26 squared uh, minus 10 squared, which is equal to the square root of 676. Let's see if that's correct. That's uh, 520, that's 640, and 36, that's 676, correct? Uh, minus 100, and so that means that AD is equal to the square root of 576, and that happens to be 24. So what we can say then is that this length here is 24, this length here is 10, and this length here is 26. Notice we can do the exact same thing on the other side. We can also draw a radius from E to C, and again, we know the length of the radius is 26, this is 10, so with the very same type of calculation, we can show that this side must be 24 as well. Then we can say that if this is perpendicular, that means that this line segment must be equal to that line segment. Again, if you're not sure if that's true, you can draw a line straight across here. From F to C, we know that that's the radius, which is 26. We know this distance here is 10. And we can then see with the same calculation that distance here is 24 as well. So there's this perfect symmetry everywhere. And so therefore you can see that we can do the same on the other side. This is 26, this is 10, therefore this will be 24. And notice we can then conclude that EG is congruent to AD and EF is congruent to AB. So whenever there's two chords that are equidistant from the center, those chords must be congruent, and that is what we conclude from what we just saw here. And that is how it's done.